Okay, so we are looking at baptism in third, and we will start with prayer. All right. Lord God, thank you for bringing us here to study your word. Help us as we learn about baptism to appreciate what an amazing gift it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, come on in. Come on up close enough so you can see. And open up your catechism, 315, and your connection. 149. No, it's 149. Yes. Do you guys see your underwear? What? I couldn't hear you. What did you say? You did it. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's look at baptism third, which is one of the things for today. So in baptism first, it's first what is baptism? Baptism, not just by water, but use like God's command connected with God's word, right? What is that word? God's special about the blood of your Matthew, go make sense of all nations, baptism, right? And so that says do it. It's water in the word, right? Second, what does baptism do for us? Talks about the power of baptism, right? Baptism works for giving us of sin, for the rich from death and the devil, gives eternal salvation. Go home, believe this is the word and promise of God declare. What are those words and promises of God? And then you have that passage from Mark, where we believe in baptism and say, really not being condemned. And then we go on to how can water do such great things? You ever think about that? How is that water going to do some special things? Well, it is certainly not the water that does such things, but God's word, which is in with the water, and faith, which trusts this word used with the water. For without God's word, the water is just plain water and not baptism. But with the word, it is baptism, that is a gracious water of life and a washing of rebirth by the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Laura, like, what does that say to you? How can water do such great things? Put that in your own words. It's connected with God's word, right? And who is using that word to work his miracle? Well, the, the pastor is, is a, a tool in the process, but who is really the power behind it? God, yeah. Washing of rebirth by the Holy Spirit. And then where it's written, Christ the Lord, or St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, God saved us through the washing of of rebirth and renewal. What's it talking about? Baptism, yep. So a washing of rebirth. Remember what we were by nature because of our sins? We were dead. But baptism gives us the washing of rebirth. We're born again. And renewal, instead of old and worn out, new by the Holy Spirit. Who does it? The Holy Spirit. Whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs. Jay, what's an heir? Repeat that question, please. What's an heir? Like if you're heir to a millionaire's fortune, what does that mean? It means that you're well, next it's, it's, to getting it or something. Like get it, right? So you're guaranteed to get it. It's being passed down to you. So we become heirs, but it's not heirs of millions of dollars. We're heirs having the hope, the certain hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. So that was the first part of your memory work that you were supposed to memorize for this time. Uh, baptism third. And then our passage was from Romans 6. And this is going to be in the fourth part of baptism. We'll talk about this one. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. Remember when we looked at this passage when we were talking about what a baptism meant to a funeral? Right? We were connected with his burial in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live in your life. Does that make sense? When you were memorizing it, you understood it? Okay. 
And then for baptism, what does baptizing with water mean? In other words, what does it mean for our lives? Right? In baptism first, we talk about what is it, right? It's water and water. In baptism second, we said, what does it do? It gives forgiveness of sin, new life, and salvation, right? In baptism third, we said, how could water do that? And Laura said, because it's connected with God's word, and it's the Holy Spirit doing the work, right? And now, what does baptizing with water mean? Baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned by daily contrition and repentance. Three terms in there. Old Adam. You guys know what the old Adam is? The sinful part of you. So, when we are born, here's our question. When we are born, and I'll turn this to you guys to see. There we go. When we are born, what does our heart look like by nature? Sinful. Sinful, like totally full of sin. How much good do we have in us? Like how how good are we by nature without God? Only evil all the time, right? Remember the four words, the four pictures the Bible uses? We were Dead, and what could a dead body do? Nothing. We were what else? We were hostile, yeah, and we were fighting against God. We were hostile to God. We thought if we were foolish, and the first one. Our sin did what? You forgot to think about it. Separated us from God. So those were the four pictures. That's what we were by nature. So if you look at our hearts, it shouldn't have made it red, it shouldn't have made it black, right? We were sinner all the way through, right here. So let's change colors here. And then, that didn't work too well. But then, then, when the Holy Spirit worked faith in our hearts, there wasn't just the old Adam, but there was also the, the new person, right? So the new person and the old Adam both lived in the heart, right? So the old man is saying sin, sin, sin. The new person is saying, oh, sin. Love God, right? Do these loving things. And the more we're in God's word and receiving the sacraments and doing things that strengthen the new person, what's happening? They get stronger and the old Adam gets weaker, right? But sometimes we get into the old Adam and do something we shouldn't, and that gets a little stronger, right? So there's this constant back and forth of old Adam and new man in our heart while we're living here, right? And then heaven looks to be perfect because all the sins are gone, no more sin, no more temptation, all of that. So back to our baptism fourth. Baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned. If you're drowning something, what are you doing? Killing them. Killing them. Yep. So hold them in the water. You're not going to have any power to drown them, right? Should be drowned. How? By daily contrition and repentance. Micro Ann, what do you understand by those two words? Contrition, first of all. You know what that word means? You're on yours. And you want to take that one? Contrition. We have a hymn that says, With contrite hearts I cry. Contrition means that we are sorry for our sins. That I realize what I did is really bad and I feel bad about it. That's contrition. Kind of like repentance, but what else is there in repentance? 
I feel bad about my sin, and I'm looking to Jesus for forgiveness, right? I'm asking God for his mercy. So, you know the story of Judas? What did Judas do, Ethan? What? He sold Jesus. He betrayed Jesus. He handed him over to the to the uh, uh, chief priest so that he could be put to death. Afterward, how did Judas feel about that? What's that? Really, really bad. Yep. Remember Peter in the high priest's courtyard when Jesus was on trial and the people came up to Peter and said, "Oh, you were one of his disciples, weren't you?" What did you do? He denied him. He said, I've never heard of the guy. I don't know the guy. I don't know him. And then the rooster crowed after he did it the third time. And he remembered that Jesus said, Before the rooster crowed, you're going to me three times. And how did he feel about that? Really bad. So they both felt really bad. They both had contrition. What did Judas do about it? You know how he, what happened next? What did, what did Judas do? Why isn't Judas one of the disciples after that story? He went out and killed himself. But he felt really bad and went and killed himself. Peter felt really bad. But he stuck around and looked to Jesus for forgiveness. So one of them had contrition. One of them had contrition and repentance. Who just had contrition? What? Judas, he felt bad about his sin. Who had repentance? Peter. Yep. And so he got to hear Jesus say that you are forgiven. So baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned by daily contrition and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. Like if there's a, a temptation for you, like let's say your parents say, uh, no more than 30 minutes of screen time a day, and you've already done 30 minutes of screen time. And uh, they're not in the room, and the video game is right there, and you just kind of leave it on so that you can kind of walk by and hop on real quick. Um, that's not putting it to death, right? That's letting the temptation still be there. Maybe you turn it off or go in a different room or, or throw the video game in the garbage, you know, something like that. That would be putting it to death, right? To avoid those temptations. So, Baptism means, so now that I'm a new person, the Holy Spirit's living in me, that every day the old Adam should be drowned by daily contrition and repentance, all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. So every day that I remember my baptism, what can I remember? What am I doing with my sin, my sinful nature? Drowning it, saying, I don't want to do those things. And what am I, what am I doing for the, the new person in me? Strengthening me, right? Where is this written? St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, we were buried in Christ, we baptized in death, in order that this is Christ, we pray from death, and glory to the Father. We too may live a new life. Make sense? Any questions on that? All right. Now, <clears throat> you've seen this picture before, right? Someone tell me what are what, what are the means of grace? That's the grace that God's given us. What are the means of grace? Okay. Yeah. But like the definition. The means of grace are the ways. The ways God gets his good stuff to us. And what are those ways? The word and sacrament, right? The gospel and word and sacrament. And what are the sacraments, Bethany? What are the sacraments? Well, remind her what makes something a sacrament. What do you think? I don't want baptism. So baptism is one of the sacraments. What are the three things that make something a sacrament? The word means sacred act. So it's a sacred act. That God told us to do, instituted by Christ. It's a sacred act that contains for baptism with water, 
a physical element connected with God's word. And it's a sacred act that offers and gives forgiveness of sins in your life and salvation, right? So these things, God would promises that these sacraments give. So now, Bethany, what are the two sacraments? We got baptism, the one that uses water, and the other one uses bread and wine. What's that called? Yep, well, what, what do we call it? Sacrament. We receive his body and blood, and from under the bread and wine. It's called the sacrament of communion. So it is one of the things. Yep. Okay. Make sense? You're able to do that on set. Remember it forever because it's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> Baptism is a sacrament because it uses water in the name of the triune God, right? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who is it for? All nations, adults and children. And we talked last time, why should even kids be baptized? They're a part of all nations. Okay, God's the one uh, giving the gift, and he's the one who gives the gift of faith. And they were born sinful, so they need forgiveness, right? Um, all right. There we go. So now, yeah. Catechism, page 315, connection to page 147. So look at page 315. And we are going to look at the questions that you would have written stuff down from the connections. Who did get your connections worked on? Raise your hand. No one? Laura, you did? Okay. So, Laura, what, what do you have down for three orders? Or no, I'm sorry, for three eleven. Good God, so I would bless us in this way. Okay. And how how did God make that happen? So look at those passages there. You see John 3, 5, and 6. Why is baptism able to offer that? Ethan, you want to read it? John 3. Nice and long, of course. Okay. So who's making it happen? <laughs> Ethan, you just read it. Who's making it happen? This Holy Spirit, yeah. In Acts 2 38. He says, repent and be baptized. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit in Titus 3. It's a washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So uh, why is baptism able to offer and give such great blessings? Because the Holy Spirit's doing it. The Holy Spirit is working. And the next one, what does the Holy Spirit use to work through baptism? It's not just water. The Word, yep. The Holy Spirit uses the Word. So that's 312. If you don't have it written down right now, 312, the Holy Spirit uses the Word. And what does the Holy Spirit do through the Word of God connected with the water of baptism? Okay, how? What are these passages talking about? Ephesians 2, it says, It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it's not from yourself, but it's the gift of God. 1 Corinthians says, No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3, and it's by the good conscience for God. And Galatians 3, all of you are baptized in Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. Mark 16, whoever believes in his baptism is saved, whoever does not believe in his death. So the Holy Spirit is doing the work. 
He's using the word, and what's he what's he making? What's he either creating or strengthening in us? Faith. Faith. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit either creates or strengthens faith in baptism. When would you say he creates faith in baptism? If it's someone who didn't believe, like maybe a little lady that didn't know, and then God gave the gift of faith. What if someone believes and just hasn't been baptized, and then they read the Bible that God says you should be baptized because all these good things are out there in baptism, and then they get baptized? Is that creating faith? It's strengthening faith. Yep. Yeah. So it creates or strengthens faith. <laughs> And why is baptism called a gracious water of life, like a washing the river? That comes back to our purpose, right? It's gracious because how much of it could we have done on our own? So it all had to be God saying, I'm going to do this even though they don't deserve it, right? That's grace. Um, God's undeserved promise, love. What's grace? Excellent work. I think it's worth fun as well. Okay. Then let's look at this. Agree or disagree? If someone falls away from the church and from God, they should be rebaptized when they come back. I'm not seeing any thumbs on the Michael, and I can only see from here up, so you got to put your hand up higher. Agree to say, if someone falls away from church and from God, they should be baptized when they come back. Jade, what's your answer on that? I don't see anything. Michael, I don't even see anything. You're in the middle, Jade? Explain it to me then. Why are you saying middle? I put it in the middle because I didn't really know. Okay. So help her out. Myra, you're saying no. Why? But even if you come back, you should be Okay. Who's who's making the promise in baptism? God is. Does God ever break his promises? No. So you come back and you you can say, you know what, I can take comfort in my baptism again because I know that I've been baptized and I know what that means, right? Yeah. Oh, Mike, do I can't hear anything? How about now? Can you hear me? Probably not. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right. So, where are we? Oh, yeah. Uh, next one. What harm is coming from rebaptizing people? All right. Okay. It creates doubt. Yeah, we don't want that because baptism that can give us confidence. How important is baptism? Bethany? Very important. Why is it very important? Because it's strengthening the faith. What else? It washes away our sin. What else? Creates what else? His word strengthens my faith too. Why do I need to do that as well? Well, I got to do it. Yeah. And he said to it because he knows sometimes we need proof. We need to be able to see something. <laughs> sometimes we need to see. But that doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, but in baptism, there's proof, right? You saw the water, you heard the word, and God says, when this happens, 
here's what it is. So yeah, very important. Imagine you have a friend at church who hasn't been baptized. What would you say to that person to encourage them to receive this gift of God? Ethan, what would you say? What would you say? Oh, well. Uh, I think I'd say something else. That's what silence is for. Start me. You tell me to start. How about hi? Would you say hi? Okay, you say hi. I'm going to say. Do you think this person should be that time? Okay. So maybe tell them that. Why? I'm not really convinced here, you think. Think about talking about. Why should I get back that? Okay. But are we forgiven if that is that that's the forgiveness? Okay. Why should I get back that? I'm being but this is a real conversation. Because you know people are that time. Mary, you want to say again? I would say I think this is not quite the case. It should be a little bit more like a little bit more so far. It means telling people, yes, I don't have a plan, so I'm not working with the person that I do believe it should be a plan. It's a plan that I have so much to do with that. Okay. And it's that truth I was given. And he told us to, it's never going to be. Say, I don't want to do what I don't want to do, right? Um, any other things you guys could say you might say? Bethany, what do you think? You just got back that not too long ago, so you're fresh on this. So, so why did you get that test? You can tell that person why you want to get that test, and that might help. What would you say? Because you throw fries, bumps, 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 Okay. Okay, so you trusted Vicar Ryan and he told you this is a good thing to do. Okay, okay. And of course, even more trustworthy than Vicar Ryan is God. And what he says to do. Okay. okay. Anyone else to add in? Okay. What does my baptism mean for me now? I was baptized 49 years ago in two days. So 48 years ago in six years ago. What does it mean for you now? Bethany was baptized last year. You guys were baptized how old are you? You were eight, and you guys were both babies. Okay. It's that ongoing reminder um, that, like we saw in the the uh, what is what does baptism mean for me um, daily? Down in the old Adam, uh, the new person arises. So yeah, baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned by daily contrition and repentance. Every time I remember my baptism, I remember, you know what? That's a drowning in that. <laughs> and that all the evil deeds and desires be put to death, it also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God with righteousness and purity forever. And then that Romans passage. All right. Oh, before we get on. So now look at 
3.15 in your connections. What change did the Holy Spirit bring on in my life through my baptism? What'd you have for that one, Ron? <laughs> what? Do you have anything on that one? Okay. Well, let's look at those passages then. Romans 8. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. What change did the Spirit bring when he brought me to faith? Instead of being hostile to God, he made me. What does hostile mean? Angry. Fighting against him. Instead of hostile to God, he made me what? Are you fighting against God? Do you hate God? Yeah. Makes you say, you know what? I want to do what God says because I love him, right? First Corinthians 2, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolish. So that's where we were. What did the Spirit do when he brought me to faith? Maybe we believe it. That's not foolish, but it's beautiful. Um, Ephesians 2, because of his great love for God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. What were we? Dead, alive. So what did the Holy Spirit do through all of this? He changed what we were by nature. We used to be separated. Now we're together. We used to be dead. Now we're alive. We used to be hostile to God. Now we love him. We used to think his word is foolish. Now we think his word is great. Right? Okay. So that's 3.15. What new attitude characterizes the new person within each of us? Oh. oh, excellent. Instead of thinking, oh, uh, what's the point? We have hope because we know what God has done for us. Okay. 317, in what ways does the old Adam battle against the new person within us? What does the old Adam try to do? What? Make a stand, right? What do we call that? Yep. So all the limitations. Um, sometimes it's from something we say on TV or on TikTok. Sometimes it's from just an idea that comes up in our head. Sometimes it's from peer pressure, our friends, right? So the old Adam battles in all of those ways against us. In what way does baptism equip us on the community to battle against the old man? Okay, so it strengthens our faith. Um, using the word, right? So we hear his promises, we see what he has done, and increases our love, we the fun of what he wants. And then in a closer look, you see those two definitions. I talked before, Laura, what are you going to write down for contrition? Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about the difference between contrition and repentance. Bethany, what do you think? What's contrition? Remember, I talked about Judas and Peter and how they feel about their sins? Feeling bad about your sins. So contrition is being sorry for your sins, feeling bad that you did that. And what's repentance? Yep, so it's both feeling bad about my sins and asking God to forgive me, right? So contrition is just feeling bad about it. Repentance is feeling bad about my sin and asking God for forgiveness. Make sense? So you got something written down there on 149 in connection? All right. How do we drive sinful nature in our daily lives? How 
How do we drown our sinful nature in our daily lives? Well, since I'm baptized, so baptism means that the old Adam in us should be drowned by contrition and repentance. So when we tell God this for our sins and we ask him for forgiveness, that's helping us to push down the uh, listen to the All right. Here. We have Hey, Rose, Chris. Rose, can you hear Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, awesome. So, let's review um, what we've been talking about, right? Baptism first talks about what is baptism. It's not just plain water, but it's what is that God's plan connected with God's word. Baptism second says, um, what does baptism do for us? What does baptism do for us? It works forgiveness of sin, delivers the devil, and gives eternal life and salvation to all who believe this, and the word promises of God declared. And then today we got into baptism third, which says, how can water do such great things? Laura, how can the water do such great things? Connected with that word, and who's doing the work through it? Who uses that word connected with water? God, the... Which person in the Trinity are we talking about? God, the Holy Spirit. Yep, God, the Holy Spirit works in baptism, because it's a washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, right? They're all involved, but normally the, the Holy Spirit is attributed with that, that working faith and strengthening faith. And then four, uh, what does baptism mean for me? It means that I want to daily drown the old Adam and, and strengthen that new creation and the new person in us, the faith living in us. Um, so we had talked before, and I want to see if you, uh, there's two things that I want to see if you can still depend. The first one, Christian, you're on for this one. Someone says we shouldn't baptize babies because um, they don't know what they're doing. Christian, you got to come off the mute. All right, we're not just going to wait for you. Microland, you want to take that? Someone said you shouldn't baptize babies because, because they, they don't, don't know what they're doing. What would you say to that person? Can you hear me, my brother? All right, we're not having good luck on this. Jay, you're on mute. What would you say to that person who says you shouldn't baptize babies? Um... I think I would say God said that all nations um, get baptized and children, um, babies are part of all nations. Absolutely. Who else can give other reason? But, okay. Who causes faith? It's not the child, it's God. God's going to give that gift. And if God wants to give that gift, God can give that gift, right? Can children believe? Yeah, these are the yes. ones who believe in me. Um, how about, uh, um, what was the other part of this? All nations. Oh, and people. some people say, well, they don't need it because they ever sin. Is that true? No. Surely I'm going to my first and it's time I'm going to concede. So yeah, so baptize all nations. Here's the other one. Let's see if you can do it. Who wants to take this one? Myra. Okay. Myra, you have a friend who has not been baptized. I will be a friend and say, I don't think I really need it. I believe in God. Okay. So you're saying it will strengthen my faith, it will be better? 
Okay. So why is it so cool? I mean, why do you why do you like your back pain so much? Okay. So God does attach those promises to it, right? He says, uh, your sins are washed away. He says, uh, uh, you're giving me to the Holy Spirit. He says, that can be saved. Uh, he says all of those things. Um, but I don't give me another God said, right? Um, he said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, whoever does not believe will be condemned. Um, but you say, but I believe. But if I believe, then I should listen to what God says when he says, repent and baptize all of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Good. Well, we got a chat on here. There's been chat. <laughs> Okay, Mike, are you able to hear? Mike, Lynn, and Christian are just sitting there watching. Okay, all right. I don't know what I can tell you guys because the others are hearing. Oh. All right. Okay. So homework for next week's lesson. Read page 327 to 341 in the Catechism and review the pages we went through today. Finish the connections questions on those pages. So make sure you've got answers written down. You know, all it takes is reading through those passages. And that's where you get your answers. Memorize keys first. And I'll put that up here in a second. We'll talk about it. Memorize Matthew 18, verse 18. Do the Google Forms follow-up quiz. People have not been doing those. Do any old ones that you miss? Bring your books. All right. So the keys first. This is what we're going to talk about next week. First, what is the key? And we'll study that next week. Um, but what do you use the key for? To unlock something or to, let's well, say so you're leaving, you're going to, or you lock it. Yeah, you lock or unlock things. So Jesus called uh, the ability to forgive or not forgive the keys because they lock and unlock heaven. The use of the keys is that special power and right which Christ gave to his church on earth to forgive the sins of penitent sinners. What do you mean be penitent, Ethan? Are you saying, I don't care, stop talking to me? No, that's impenitent. Penitent means I'm sorry for my sins, that I'm repenting, right? So that's penitent. So we forgive the sins of penitent, so someone who has repentance, sinners, but to refuse forgiveness to the impenitent, that means they're not repentant, as, as long as they do not repent. Where is this written? The Holy Evangelist John writes in John chapter 20, Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So memorize that, and then we'll talk about uh, what it means next time. And then Matthew 18, 18. <coughs> this is Jesus telling his disciples, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, so if, if you tie something to someone, it's stuck on, right? You bind it to them, um, you, you tie it to them. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, so you untie it, on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he's talking about the forgiveness of sin. If I tell someone your sins aren't forgiven, God says that the same in heaven. And if I tell someone your sins are forgiven, their sins really are forgiven. The amazing power. So we're going to talk about how to use that next time. Any questions on that? All right. A note for the National Youth Rally coming up. End of June. Sign up. Let me know if you're coming. 
Camp South, July 23rd, 26th, end of July. And let's see, move that way. Right. Here we go. There we are. All right, any questions on that today? None. Who's actually going to be your, your member of the uh, Bethany's going to? No. Myra will do it? Are you going to do it or not? Are you going to do it? Ethan? How about you guys online? Are you going to do your member? I will yeah. try to. I don't like the try word. Because then you get you have an excuse. Say, oh, I decided not to. What did what did uh, the Star Wars guy Yoda 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 mm -hmm. said? Do or not do. There is no try, right? So so it's a matter of just saying, you know what? I got to do this. I'm going to do it. Um, and so you just give it time. And if you give it time, it will work. Uh, but someone had a question? Yes. You talked about how it's not going to be baptized, but do you end up being baptized on yourself? Does it understand someone's baptism? Is um, does God ever go back on his promises? No, you've got God's promise. Yeah. But once you understand what baptism is and that I don't need to be re baptized, you can give glory to God by saying, Hey, I trust you, God. Yep. Sound good? All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, tune in to uh, the stream for the devotion here in about 10 minutes.